Okay. Should I go ahead and get started? All right. So who here, who here is actually just looking for a seat to rest on or is just uh, interested in phase noise? You're interested in phase noise? Excellent. Excellent. OK. So my name is Riyad Saeed. Uh, this is a little short presentation that uh, Ben Zanerlingo and I put together. Uh, so bear with me. I'm a little sick. Uh, but if you have any questions, we only have 15 minutes, but you can stop me and ask. Uh, we, you know, if we don't have time to go through the whole thing, it's probably OK as well. OK? <clears throat> So basically, uh, one of the things we want to do is cover uh, how do you choose, uh, how do you, you know, phase noise is always a, a complex uh, measurement that may or may not affect your, your test. And a lot of engineers I speak to don't always understand where it matters and where it doesn't. And hopefully today you'll be able to uh, have some tools to where you can actually figure out on your own whether you need the best phase noise or you won't need something a little less than that. Um, we're going to do a quick overview of signal generated choices and trade-offs as an example. We're going to talk about when phase noise matters and when it doesn't, okay? And we'll do a couple examples, one from a radar perspective and one from an OFDM uh, modulation perspective, okay, for com communications based. And then we'll talk about some resources you have to improve phase noise and signal generation. Uh, so, you know, in not every case you need the best phase noise. Sometimes you need it the very best. Maybe you're working on a radar system and you need the absolute best at every situation. And sometimes you don't. Maybe it's uh, you need to balance the cost of the phase noise together with the performance of the device, and you're trying to optimize the performance, right? Uh, and other times, it just doesn't even matter, right? It has no impact on your measurement. And you're trying to figure out, OK, which one is the best? What are the trade-offs? Is it the cost of the instrumentation or the LO or the VCO, right? Uh, maybe you need switching speed for uh, production throughput testing. Maybe that's a factor in the signal source. Okay, and there's other things, such as broadband noise, which also has an impact on your choice of signal generation uh, or technique. Okay. <clears throat> so what are some terms? So a common metric for phase noise is single sideband phase noise. Um, you know, phase noise, what it is, it's a short-term stability phenomenon, usually uh, in seconds, okay? Uh, sometimes referred to as jitter, okay? Uh, in this case, we have the script L of F curves, which are single sideband phase noise plots at a particular frequency. Um, and this phase noise is a function of your, both your signal generator, your synthesizer, your VCOs, and your system. Okay, and then there's what's called long-term stability. So that could be minutes or years. Uh, that's typically determined by your reference oscillator. All right. So uh, as a designer, you need to understand both your short-term and your long-term needs and how it impacts you and your device so you can make the best choices. <clears throat> uh, so for example, here we have our, our PSG signal generator phase noise plot. And what we have here in these blocks are areas where uh, how the synthesizer actually impacts the performance uh, of phase noise. So in this first block here, uh, you can see it's at, at a one, this is at 10 gigahertz. Between one hertz and a one kilohertz offset, a lot of that phase noise performance is actually determined by your reference oscillator uh, either inside the instrument or external to the instrument, okay? Uh, this, is a, this flat portion here is usually what we call the pedestal region, okay? And that is primarily determined by your synthesizer. You know, all your phase lock loops and your synthesizers determine that noise floor. And that's typically between 1 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz offset. Um, and then this last little portion here between 100K and a meg, that's typically determined by your oscillator used in the system. So whether it's a YIG or a VCO, okay, uh, the roll-off here will be determined by that choice. Uh, and last but not least, we have the broadband noise. So we're talking, you know, a few megahertz offset all the way out to hundreds of megahertz offset. That's typically determined by the front end or the RF chain of your instrumentation. Okay. Any questions on that? No. All right. So narrowing the hardware choices. So that's kind of a quick overview of where the phase noise is coming from. But when you're choosing a signal generator, there's things that affect each one of those categories. For example, we have a lot of signal generators out there that have both analog only or there's digital modulation as well. So when you go to digital modulation, typically you have IQ modulators, right? And the IQ modulator is usually broadband, and so has, that has a tendency to degrade the broadband noise, okay? Uh, also, depending on how your front end is optimized, right, maybe you're optimized for more linearity, 
Uh, but in terms of CW operation, maybe you just want to operate at max power. Uh, in that case, you're willing to trade off maybe harmonics for improved broadband noise, those sorts of things. Uh, not only that, there's different synthesizer architectures. So there's a single loop synthesizers versus uh, triple loop, single loop, or double loop synthesizers, and that will affect the pedestal region uh, of phase noise. And it also is a trade off in cost, typically. Um, and of course, like we described earlier, uh, phase noise performance levels can be either done with a VCO, voltage controlled oscillator, or a YIG. And again, that determines the roll off in that pedestal region at those 100 kilohertz to 1 megahertz offsets. Okay? And then in this case, if you have a YIG, it usually affects switching speed. So there are trade offs with speed in, uh, in the signal generator. <clears throat> uh, here's an example of our new X series signal generators. Uh, we have our EXG here which has a single loop architecture, okay? And you can see uh, with our new MXG, we have what's called a triple phase lock loop architecture. And fundamentally what happens here is our pedestal region drops by 10 to 20, 25 dB going with that new triple loop synthesizer architecture, okay? Another example is our PSG. And here we're showing a frequency versus phase noise relationship, right? And so the, the general uh, trend here is as you go in increasing frequency, the phase noise degrades proportionally, okay? Uh, but however, it's not always a simple relationship. Uh, this next plot kind of shows uh, with our MXG, for example, across the frequency range from 300 megahertz to 5 gigahertz, it looks pretty uh, symmetrical, but then you look at broadband noise, it does vary with frequency a bit. So it's not always a direct relationship. It can be complex, and you might want to actually take a spot measurement of your frequency of interest to see what the true phase noise is at that point. Okay, so in terms of where does phase noise matter and where doesn't it matter? Uh, so here's some examples. OFDM systems have a tendency to be, to be sensitive with phase noise because they're trying to be orthogonal with the adjacent carriers, okay? You have oscillator substitution. Uh, usually you want a very clean oscillator so you'll know it's not contributing to your measurements in your system. Um, folks working on ADCs, analog to digital converters, trying to get the best signal to noise ratio. So any jitter on their clocks or their analog signals that they're using that characterize that could affect the sensitivity characterization of that device. Um, of course, if you're working on Doppler radar, uh, phase noise has a direct impact on, on that, and we'll give you an example. Things where it doesn't matter, though, uh, again, going back to OFDM. OFDM is it's kind of tricky. Some cases it matters, and in some cases it doesn't. If you know what the trade-offs are, you can make the right decision. Okay. Uh, if you're working on very wideband signals like uh, QPSK over several megahertz, typically not very sensitive to phase noise. If you're working on just basic CW harmonic testing, uh, amplifier gain testing, again, phase noise really doesn't come into play in those types of measurements. So if you're buying, paying a lot of money for phase noise and you're just doing these types of tests, you're wasting your money. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so one of the things that we have as a tool uh, is for some engineers to, if you don't have a good feel of what, how phase noise impacts your design, we have a technique in some of our signal generators to actually inject phase noise. So in this case, you can, uh, what we do is we digitally add a 20, 20 dB per decade slope, both to the uh, close-in phase noise and broadband phase noise. You, you define F1 and F2, and you, you can tell us what phase noise level you want. And by just doing that, you can then inject a specified and controlled amount of phase noise and characterize how your device behaves under those conditions. And that way, you can optimize your design for not over-designing the reference section. So if you, if, how much phase noise can you get away with, right? And so there's some tools to do that. Uh, here's an example uh, plot. Uh, here the, we have the standard phase noise of their signal generator. And, as, and we have two different levels of phase noise that have been injected with different offsets and DBC ratios, okay? And again, you can try these different levels on the fly and see which one is most effective for you. That way you can optimize your design instead of guessing at what you think is needed. <clears throat> uh, so how do you actually go about figuring out what exactly your system needs? Here we have a uh, radar example. Um, it's a fairly straightforward equation. Well, you're trying to figure out the Doppler offset frequency because that's what you want to detect in your radar system. Right? In this case, you, uh, it's two times the fundamental frequency you're transmitting at uh, over the speed of light times the uh, radial velocity of the return signal. Okay? Uh, in this case, let's talk about uh, airport surveillance radar. Maybe at three gigahertz, you're seeing a 100 mile per hour uh, return uh, airplane traveling through the air. 
its Doppler return signal offset is going to be 900 hertz. So right there, you know the, f the phase noise at the 900 hertz offset is likely going to matter to you as the designer. Um, if you're working on military applications, maybe you're looking at Mach 1.5 in the X band, maybe it's the 33 kilohertz offset in this case. Okay? So now you're starting to define where it matters to you. The next step would be uh, to consider other effects. So a lot of synthesized signal generators have frac end loops or phase lock loop frac end loops and that in inject spurs of random nature. And so you're going to want to choose a signal generator that's not going to impact your system. Um, in this case, if you have a radar return signal that's at uh, FD1 or FD2 and you have spurs coming from your LO adjacent to those uh, return signals, that could confuse your radar system and ultimately degrade the sensitivity of your whole, uh, whole system. Okay? So those are other considerations in phase noise. So you've talked about your Doppler offset or your frequency offset. We've talked about maybe spurs. Your next question is what's the absolute level that you need to get to? Um, in this example, it's from a, a book called Introduction to Radar by uh, Skolnick. Okay? If you want to understand where all this came from, that's a good reference. We have it in the back of this presentation. And here it has a calculation for a radar, a 1 gigahertz Doppler radar uh, with a bandwidth of uh, 10 kilohertz. And we assume a target uh, surface area of 1 square meter okay, and a minimum velocity. In this case, if you do all the math, what that translates to is a minus 120 dBc per hertz at a 200 hertz offset. So now you have your system requirements if you're trying to get to this performance level. Now from there, you can start to choose uh, what type of signal generator or LO that you're going to need for that system to meet these requirements. That was a simple uh, radar example. Here we're going to step, change gears, and now talk about OFDM. Okay, in terms of OFDM, uh, there's something called the pilot tracking channels. Okay, these are usually a very uh, re repeated pilot channels that have, uh, maybe it's in BPSK with a predefined uh, repeating sequence, okay? And this is used as the system reference on the receiver. And the beauty about this, uh, this pilot channel is that you can track out phase error, uh, low rate phase error. So close in phase noise, maybe a kilohertz or less, okay? Uh, in this case, without pilot tracking, if you had some phase, phase noise on that receiver or on that transmitter, it would uh, rotate the constellation, right? You'd have a poor EVM. But you turn that pilot tracking on, now the reference are the pilot channels. And so they can effectively remove some of that phase error, right? And now you get good EVM performance, okay? So a lot of the OFDM standards have that, okay? But typically, this is only good out to about 10% of the channel spacing. So in an OFDM system, you have multiple carriers. Your channel spacing is maybe 100 kilohertz, 300 kilohertz. Typically, it's debatable. Everyone has a different number, but it's a, roughly 10% is a good rule of thumb to start from. Okay. Um, and so this is a, in the next uh, section of the slides. We're going to do a, an example calculation. Here, we're looking at an OFDM signal, and we're making the following assumptions. Uh, we're going to estimate phase noise effects for, as it contributes directly to EVM. Okay. Uh, so we're assuming spurious and other nonlinearities are not, uh, not very significant. Uh, we're removing equalization, we're turning, uh, and then we're assuming 10% pilot tracking is removing some phase noise error. Okay? The example we're going to show initially is uh, WiMAX, which has 10 kilohertz subcarry spacing and a 10 megahertz channel. Okay? Uh, here, here's the, the quick and dirty. All right? In this case, uh, we're assuming this, in this phase noise plot, we're assuming anything be below 1 kilohertz, which is 10% of 10K. Okay? is not part of the uh, EVM metric. And in this case, we're showing uh, a 1 megahertz uh, channel. Uh, this is not the WiMAX example, but in this case, we're showing a 1 megahertz channel. So anything outside the 1 megahertz channel bandwidth is filtered off. So really, thing, the only thing that matters is the phase noise in this region. Okay? And you can see right now the phase noise rolls off at the one kilo, 10, 100 kilohertz offset. So we're just doing the integrated noise over this channel, because anything out here looks to be pretty insignificant. Okay? Um, if you do the math here, we have the example calculation. It ends up being minus 42 dB. All right? So that's one example. We have another example here. This is with wireless LAN. All right? And again, following that same equation, uh, wireless LAN, if you, if you know anything about wireless LAN, has about a 312 kilohertz spacing between the OFDM carriers. 
So in this case, we're going to start 10% of that, which is 30 kilohertz. So we're saying anything less than 30 kilohertz in this phase noise plot is not significant. Okay? Uh, but in this case, what we're integrating in is over the full, uh, in this case, I believe, 10 megahertz uh, span of the signal, all right, all the way out to here. Even though the phase noise out here we, we think is insignificant, we're just going to go ahead and integrate over that bandwidth anyway. Okay, once we do, we do that integration of just looking at the phase noise plot, we calculate an EVM to be about minus 26.35 is what we would expect. And so what we did is we went ahead and ejected phase noise to this specified amount into our uh, transmitter, and we went ahead and actually measured it. And lo and behold, it measured to be about minus 27 dBm. Okay, so the math does work, all right? It's not perfect, there is some differences, and that has to do with the tracking error of the equalizer. Okay, and its ability to remove the, the phase noise. So, questions and answers. In this case, uh, is it good to generate phase noise that's representative? Is it a good idea to inject phase noise to find out where your system is sensitive and where it's not? As a recommendation uh, to you as a designer, I would say yes, it's a good idea. It's always a good idea to, to figure out where your system boundaries are and where your mar margins of error are. So if you're in a production line, and you want to find out, well, is my yield going to be good enough? Do I have enough margin to have a 100% pass rate? If you characterize it enough early enough in R&D, you'll, you'll be able to answer that question more effectively. And so we would recommend, yes, try both. Understand your ultimate performance. Find out what your, your device can actually do and how tolerant is it to degraded phase noise in your, uh, in your VCOs and your LOs. And should you turn on pilot tracking or not? Okay, uh, again, it's kind of the same concept. You want to characterize your design and understand where it's going to uh, degrade. And so in this case, you do want to uh, characterize with, both with tracking and with tracking on or off. Okay. How are we doing on time? Good? I'm done. Okay. All right, so in a nutshell, uh, we have uh, basically there's a lot of things you could do to optimize uh, phase noise. Uh, whether you want to do subside or reference section, use external dividers. Um, there's different techniques to, uh, to actually, if you use a divider, what happens is uh, you'll improve your phase noise, but, but you, might necessarily, you might degrade the, uh, the FM deviation, those sorts of things. But there's ways of improving your phase noise if, uh, if, you don't, if you're not happy with what you currently have. Okay? Um, so that's it in a nutshell. I went very fast. Uh, there's a bunch of references in, in this presentation if you want to look into this more. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> How much over am I?